Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Mishaps, Magic, and Mayhem. I've tried it so you can benefit. Where do we begin on this journey? We want women to show up, show off, and share their story and the truth. And I mean the whole truth about how they got to where they are, what happened along the way, and what they learned on this journey that just might give some insight to another woman seeking the same. Our aim is to provide a space to be heard using our collective voices to make impact in the world. So grab a friend and get ready because these waves of women are diving in deep, sometimes head first, and making big waves their own way. Hey everybody, welcome back to Mishaps, Magic and Mayhem. I'm Tyler Skinner. I'm thrilled to be hanging out with Megan Camille. She and I just agreed. We just came to this conclusion. There's no real way to introduce someone's full essence on a show. So for purposes today, we're going to call her an intuitive business consultant. And I cannot wait to dive in and find out more about what that actually means and entails for Megan. So Megan, mishaps, magic, and mayhem. You're coming to us all the way from Phoenix. What What's going on in your world? What comes up for you with your story? Where does it begin? Oh, my story begins in so many different places because I've had one lifetime after another in this 35 years. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like I've, I've just lived in, in different realities, different experiences. And some of the big ones that stand out is at 19, I was sex trafficked and I was a prostitute for four years. And that was like a very significant lifetime that then had a couple of years of, of healing and integration and, and definitely dark night of the soul. And then I was reborn again. And soon I was married and I was a stay-at-home mom of two little kids. And that was its own lifetime, it felt like. And from there, you know, I ended up knowing that I was being called to do something in addition to motherhood. Um, I, I knew that there was something, something big on my heart and it had always actually been there even before, uh, you know, having been sex trafficked as a teenager, I always had this huge motivation and, and inspiration that came through my intuition, but I just didn't know what it was. And sometimes that level of calling is so overwhelming that I chose to play small instead of like growing into it and expanding into what is this huge calling on my heart? Um, you know, I ended up in places that were smaller than my light so that I wouldn't have to, yeah, fully embrace all of, all of what I was truly here to do. And so after that, that time as a stay at home mom with my first husband, my previous husband, um, I decided that it was time for me to really step out and follow that calling. It had been a whisper and it wasn't going away, not after, you know, a, a decade of drowning myself in, in dark nights of the soul and, and, you know, challenging situations. I decided to finally follow that intuition. And uh, after that, the last decade or so, I felt four multiple six and seven figure businesses. And I currently uh, am the founder and owner CEO of Megan Camille Enterprises, where I support my clients in restructuring their businesses to create seven figures in three to four hours a day, three to four days a week. I I'm blown away. And I, and thank you, Megan, honestly, for, for going there. I, I say this a lot when I hear someone that is brave you know, in that sense to just say, this is, this is really where this comes from. This is an essence of me. It's a part of me. It's not the full picture. It's not the story, but for going there and letting people know about how this come, came to be, you had this inside you from an early, early age, you knew all along. And these circumstances did not define you to where you are now. And that's what I think is an incredible, just, I mean, I'm blown right now, the impact that you just created off of that, that piece in just the first few minutes. And I think that people listening will go, what? Like you miss it almost. So I want to kind of re go back and say, where, where in that you have this calling in a, as a child, you're feeling this inside, this happens to you, right? It's like a part of the story. How did that shape 
what's going on now? Did that have any effect? Did it have, was it just something that you learned from like anything? I just would, I know there's something in there that might need to come out and be heard. So I'm just curious about it. Yeah, it absolutely shaped, right? I mean, I was 18, 19 ish years old. And so, you know, our brains are still not fully developed. They're still very malleable and still in, uh, in the process of taking in information to determine who we are and who we're going to be in the world. And so, you know, my last uh, last years of, de of developing that frontal lobe, I was in very abusive and traumatic type of, uh, of situations. And so absolutely, without a doubt, it has shaped who I am, right? It, it showed me, um, I experienced darkness, like not, not, not sadness and depression, which is a, a level of gray in what we might call the shadow or, or the dark uh, aspects of things. But I, I really saw in, in real life with my physical form, how there can be such, such insidious darkness and really enveloped in it. And then being able to come out of it, uh, not completely shattered. Right. Or at least That's when huge. I realized I felt completely shattered, I had the support system to repair and really use that experience, not as an excuse, not as the victim. And now my life is, has this, this sad sort of sorry trajectory because poor me, that happened to me. Instead, I really knew how to integrate eventually over, over the years, how to integrate those very intense experiences and keep what was actually um, cultivating a leader, cultivating someone who could withstand and be a lot. And so that's how I see it has, has affected me is it, it propelled me. It, it let me know uh, that discomfort is not the end of us, that uh, darkness cannot define us, and what I am capable of moving through. So while there was that that trauma, there was also that that light that we can't ever have one without the other. So as deep as I was going was also the trajectory of, of how high I could reach as well. I just feel this this it's not even polarized because you know some people say they want to live in this black and white world and like I love how you describe the gray you know that this mm -hmm. is what is gray but this was you saw really what what is all available and possible and you moved the moving through I think is really what's getting me to feel really just blown away by the power of these statements right I've moved through mm -hmm. this and I know it's possible and what's available to me then someone else listening to this, I know can see that, wow, how can anything else not be possible, right? Mm -hmm. If they're, if you're in this place that is seeing darkness, experiencing what human nature can be so this side, right? And we know there's both. And I think that sometimes we forget that there is, that mm -hmm. both exist and you kind of like one without the other doesn't happen, right? It's kind of in, in all these, it plays with each other and it coincides, but what you've taken and done with that, I think is just mind blowing because a lot mm -hmm. of people, it's the other way. It's the other story. It's the flip side of it goes it, deeper into the darkness or it completely er eliminates, you know? And I, I think that you, you didn't lose hope. You said, I still saw the light. I was able to see light. Yeah. Yeah. And it reminds me, I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Inception. Have you ever seen I don't it? think I have. I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. I have to be honest. I wouldn't be able to reference that with you, but well, sure, go, go ahead and share. Yeah. They go deep into a, a dream state, multiple layers deep into a dream state. Right. And then as, as they're waking up, they hit other levels on their way back up. And that is really how I now with hindsight, see the journey from that time to here is it did take a, a certain level of awakening to go, 
oh, this is very unhealthy. This person does not love me. I am being used. And I had to actually come to terms with there was some victimization. Yes, this is abuse. Yes, you are being taken advantage of. You're not able to just leave on your own free will. There is abuse here, right? Mm -hmm. And so that was my first level of awakening. Now, if I would have stayed there, look at what happened to me. I'm a victim. That's where you can easily get looped back into very similar experiences. So the first level was recognizing, oh, this doesn't feel good. There is something not okay with this in my system anymore. And then the next level was, okay, how can I be there for myself? How can I heal me? And then the next level was to see the perpetrator, to see this, to see this guy, Rudy, who had taken me in those four years, very, uh, very abusive and used me. How could I start to see his humanity? And so when my favorite wow. practices in my healing was holding him as a baby, right? He was not born an abuser. He was not born a pimp. He was just born and so much of my healing was holding that baby and loving him and bringing him into my heart and seeing his humanity and his innocence that can never be gone, not even in his abuse of someone else. And then right there was where it just never had a, a pull on me anymore. It never had the, uh, from that moment when I started doing that type of work of loving him unconditionally, I was free. It was like, as though it never even happened. And that's why I call it like, that was that lifetime in this lifetime, but it hardly feels like me. But it was a process. It didn't happen overnight. And to be able to see someone like that, to actually be able to see that and visualize that is the most power empowering thing I think I've ever heard because I don't, I don't know. I think most of the time we're conditioned or we're told or made to feel that you, you know, it's like, you would think revenge. You would think I want to get back at this person. This person's evil. This is this. And you're, you're looking at it in such a way where you're like, well, wait a minute. If I really get to the root of this, if I go way, way back to the beginning, this person was this way, always, there was something yeah. along the way and neither are you. And so that however you intersected at this time, this point in time, is what happened. And that doesn't, again, it defines you in ways of how you're doing your work and where you are now, but it doesn't, it's not the full picture. It's not where it ends. This isn't where it just is. This is all I was available. And I, that to me is the most empowering, powerful statement I could ever receive on this end. Or I think anyone listening to this could understand is to be able to do something like that takes a tremendous amount of of courage and compassion and everything to go into that state and then say, but look at what came out on the other side for you. You have yeah. a beautiful family. You have a, you have a, I'm assuming a loving relationship. I'm just making assumptions. <laughs> you can yeah. tell us whether or not you do, but I mean, you have, you said you have five children earlier mm -hmm. and you've got this beautiful business, multiple businesses, and it's, it's your whole brand. And I just feel when I first started talking to you from that, that is it, you go like, wow, if we peel back the layers of people, I love this dream state imagery yeah. of going deeper and deeper and deeper. Cause that's where you find it. That's where you find connection. That's where you find paint. Everything's in there. And we just, it's all mixed in and we get to pull out what we want, what we mm -hmm. can, what we want and make that. Wow. Megan, I am, I'm blown away right now. By like you. you could pull out whatever we wanted, right? I could pulled out a different story. I could have gone to like this active activist space where I am now really identifying as the victim and having been done wrong. And like, right. we need people to pay for it. They need to be punished. We got to figure this out. Um, and there were moments where I considered, oh, maybe that's my work, right? And actually, um, who's Mother Teresa, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. Yeah. And when yeah. I touch lives in this space of unconditional love and acceptance of his humanity, that actually ripples out and touches more people than me showing up and saying, look at these terrible people over here. And yes. we could love them. We call them back in at some level, maybe not this lifetime or this generation, but eventually the dirty bathwater runs out when we run enough 
of the clean water, the love into it. And so, like you said, we could pull out any story from this experience. This is just the one that, that feels most enjoyable and loving. And you've turned it into something really magical and powerful. And I think that I've never heard it put this way. I have to be honest. I've heard all the other things you described, the victimization, the story of blame and shame, the, the hate. That's what I've heard the most when it comes to things like this. And so for you to flip this around completely and turn it upside down and so to speak and say, wait a minute, let's go back. Let's go back to the origins, the beginnings. And you said something so incredible about free. It felt so freeing for you. Once you could look at it that way, you said, I felt it's like, I'm free. I'm free from mm -hmm. that. Now I, now I can go on and do this, 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 and this, what I was born to do, what that little girl always said you felt inside from the very beginning. Yeah. And you're doing exactly. just that it's happening. It's not like, Oh, I, one day it's actually happening. Yes. And, and they were together, right? The healing and the yeah. doing. And so, you know, I don't want anyone to think that you actually have to wait for some sort of end result healing, because who knows how many layers I have underneath this unconditional love at this moment, right? I don't know, maybe something else will resurface, something will be activated from, from a different experience that reminds me of that. Uh, and so that it, I, yeah, it's just important for everyone to hear that it was simultaneous. I didn't go, oh, I'm not healed enough. So I can't move forward with falling in love again or um, having beautiful babies or running awesome businesses, right? They were together and actually they, they supported one another. They leveraged one another. The healing would eventually come through in how I would mother and how I would run business and how I would run business would run into how I mother it. My mother would run into I, how I healed these these core wounds. So uh, it's not linear. It is very multidimensional. Yeah. This is this is so important to hear for so many people that are going through challenging situations and and really dark situations and difficult and incredibly dangerous situations because I consider that that could it's very dangerous in a lot of ways for your mental health for you for everything. But I. I want to go into a little bit about, I, I want to focus on also your mission and your why, like this part of you that now came into the light and for, forgave in so many ways and saw and freed yourself from that whole thing and said, I'm here. And now my mission is bigger. My, I get to live into my purpose. What does that look like for Megan? What is living into your purpose? Feel like, look like, taste like, smell like. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it evolves, Tyler. It's always it evolving. does. I it know. Evolves. I knew you were going to say that. I just really wanted you to let us know from you, from your heart, what is yeah. what is that for you? You know, initially it was to build an empire. It was to build an empire and leave a legacy for my family and um, ensure wealth in my family line. And today it is just to be present. It is to be present in every moment with my children and every moment with my husband and every moment with my clients in this moment with you, that this is the only world is in this moment, you and me. Um, that is truly my ultimate. Um, I used to be a crazed woman for manifestation and I would teach manifestation and that is a, a great experience. Um, but where I've found, again, most fulfillment, most satisfaction, most joy, and most abundance is in wanting what I already have and not thinking that I can somehow create a better future than life itself. So um, for many people, they've been like, wait, what? Like, but, but you're a business coach and I make millions of dollars and I never have a money goal anymore. I never look at my business and go, okay, I need to do this so I can make that because when I make that, I'll be a seven figure business owner, right? Instead it is, I will follow my mission. Who is delivered to me today is who I serve, right? It's no longer, how do I get people to come to me so I can make some money and I can build my empire? Um, there is a power in surrender in that surrender, we actually see that we always 
already had exactly what we wanted and needed. And we just thought we had to do these funny little dances to manifest it. And actually we don't. So my biggest, you know, what, where I'm going, this big vision is to be right here, right now. Yeah. Wow. That it's my, it's mind blowing. Cause so many people talk about that. And I, like you said, there's manifestation courses and there's vision board. I mean, people talk about this all the time, but are they living it? Are they living that true purpose? Are they day-to-day -day walking that talk? And I, I feel it from you so strongly that this is, like you said, an evolution. What happened yesterday might not be tomorrow. This is not going to be me again and again and again, repeat over and over again. Mm -hmm. And that's actually the definition of insanity. I've heard it's the, you know, expecting a different result, doing the same thing over and over. So I feel like it's not a rinse and repeat. It's very much a what, and, and I always like the, and that's been my thing is, and also, and there is, you know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I'm this and this, I'm that and that, and there's all these things available to us. If we pay attention, like you said, the presence mm -hmm. being in that moment, it's there. We just had something where about your tattoo, we were just talking about this and I literally went, what is going on for everyone listening? I'm going to share a little bit because we had, I got an Oracle deck and I was checking it out and trying to have a, a moment to myself and, and really feel into today. And this experience with Megan, little did I know nothing about her, no background, no information, nothing other than her name and some other information, little bits of information that I checked out. And I got this card and it's literally on the card matching what's on your tattoo in our screen right now. And I went, yes. whoa. And I know that that seems silly to some people, right? They might go, that's silly Ugh. or coincidence. But I feel like there was something where I feel that means that there's a sign that you're meant to meet or you're meant to connect with that person or there's something there for you. There's a message. And only if I was present and feeling that way, would I be able to see that? Yeah. And oh gosh, I can't even remember who says it, but we can live is it maybe Einstein who says we can live as though everything is a miracle or nothing is a miracle. Mm. And I choose to live as everything is a miracle. So for you to draw a card with the picture of almost the exact same tattoo that I have on my arm, that's miraculous, right? Yes. And it, it isn't like, oh, that's a coincidence unless everything is a coincidence. So we get to choose. Again, this is where we're choosing our story and either everything is a miracle or nothing is a miracle. And we just experienced miracle. Yeah. Because we, and we chose that, we chose that moment, right? We chose to, I chose to share it. You, mm -hmm. you engaged. We had that moment together because we are, pre we're being present in the moment. I think your reminder to those of those that are listening to about how to do this, it's, there isn't a prescribed plan. There's not some strategy. Mm -hmm. It's like, you yeah. just said, I don't even have money goals anymore. It's just, I, you're every minute, every day, that's what you're focused on. Your intention is being present, is being where you are in that space, in that moment. That is, that to me is magical right there. Yeah. That and this is a way magical. people can do this in their work life, in their money life, in their business life, in their home life. Uh, and it, it really is the exalted form of manifestation is to yeah. not focus on manifesting, yeah. right? Is to actually be so fully in the moment that you can't help, but already have what it is that you want and need and desire. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's something that I practice through, through and through. It isn't only what I do for for business. It's what I do in relationship. It's what I do for myself. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's why so many people are, are drawn to working with me privately within their business. Cause they go, wait, how do you run or lead businesses at, at that level and not follow these sort of very rigid structured old paradigm ways of needing to know what you make in this quarter and having KPIs and yep. Yep. systems and strategies that will ensure it. And they really come to me to experience freedom of that and wealth and abundance, right? That it's not an either or where that old paradigm of, well, you got to follow this system and strategy is an either or. You yeah. have to hustle and trade your time or you don't get the yeah. wealth. Um, so yeah, it's it's a practice through and through. You have a track, you're attracting it to you. It's not a thing of, 
of I'm out going for it. I'm looking for it. I'm seeking it's coming because mm -hmm. they're seeing you living that purpose. That's what I, I feel from you is just, I live this every day. And so even me, I mean, I'm drawn to it already. I mean, I was drawn to it in the first minute of meeting you. And I think that there's, there is something about that, even on a screen on zoom energy is out there emanating. So it doesn't need to necessarily be person to person. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be in the same room to feel it. Not at all. That's the same with uh, emails. And so when people come to me, we need to like restructure their their messaging and their their branding and the way that they do email marketing. There's very little of the strategy that shifts. It's really them, right? It's it's the inner work. And then whatever they already have, maybe in motion or automated, just starts picking up. And they're like, wait, what did I do? I said, no, no, what did you be? But what did you be? Yes. Where, where in resonance did you um, align with that allowed for these systems and strategies to work, right? So oftentimes the restructuring is energetic. Now, of course, we need to understand the logistics of, of business too and systems and strategies and, and the foundation of it. But that's, you can find that anywhere. Systems and strategies is step-by-step -step direction. It's plug and play, read the directions and do the damn thing. It's yeah. most often internal that is not allowing, having read those directions and did it step-by-step, -step, uh, that's not allowing those to work is an internal game. That's it. That's exactly it. Wow. Wow. I, I'm blown away. I feel like there is so much here. There's so much to, to dive into even deeper. I would love to have you come back and share more of this because I see your evolution. And that's what I love mm -hmm. about this is these stories don't end. They don't start, begin. And there's so much layers to them. We can talk about ongoing as it's happening because mm -hmm. it's all changing yeah. all the time. So you're taking all of these things and you're living into your purpose and it's coming to you. And all of this is happening without that plan. I think so many people needed to hear that today that it yeah. doesn't need to be a plan that what if we allowed it to just happen? Yeah. What then, what and does that like mean? You introduced me just like you introduced yeah. me and you're like, ah, wait, we're, uh, we're, our essence is way bigger than an introduction. Our business, our business is spirit and what we do in the world, our mission is way bigger than a business plan. So while yeah. we can use that, we cannot fit into it. Literally we can't once yeah. you are, rest you can't you don't yeah don't put me in a box you know what's funny I heard the other day the box this is amazing I loved this the box is not when people say I want to think outside the box your the box is your thinking so yeah. you actually in order to think outside the box you have to diff, change the way you're thinking about it change the way mm -hmm. you're perceiving it change the way you're doing it you're being you have to change all that in order to be out of the box. There isn't something that you do. It's how you, like you said, how you be. Mm, exactly. Oh, oh so I know one. I'm getting the chills again. Megan, how can our listeners get in contact with you? I, I'm just, this, this conversation has been one of the most exhilarating, also like really defining, I think moments that we've had on the show. It's, I haven't heard taking what you took. I, I just have so much swirling around in my own head about what does that mean? The darkness and what does that mean? The freedom and the forgiveness and all these things. I just have so many themes coming up and I can't wait to have you back to share more of like, this is where it has gone now. This is where I'm continuing. This is what's happening. But how can our listeners find you? Because there are mm -hmm. people that are just going to be attracted to this conversation, to what you have to share, what you offer, and also just also to be in that with you, even if it's the forgiveness piece of just learning about holding that baby, you know, that mm -hmm. mindset, that part of you that goes deeper and deeper and says, hold on, this is how we free ourselves from some of this burden and some of this pain. Yeah. So th thank you for all those kind words. I receive that. I, I feel very seen and, and heard and accepted by you. So thank you for, for that experience. And I just want to add one piece about the, yeah. the forgiveness is there's actually an exalted form of forgiveness, which is there's nothing to forgive, right? Because if I'm still in the space of forgiving him, it is that he did me wrong and I am the victim. Um, so I don't forgive him. I praise him and I give reverence to him. And if he were here, I would love him. That's all I would do is in deep gratitude and, and love. 
Um, so I just wanted to add that one little Thank tiny you. Frequency, frequency shift in there, uh, but there is, there's nothing for me to forgive. And uh, where you could find me is megancamille.com, uh, as well as I'm on Instagram at the Megan Camille and Facebook, Megan Camille. Intuitive Business Consulting with Megan Camille is, is Facebook. So uh, I have a couple of, you know, uh, masterclasses, Mo Money, No Hustle, and Impact, Joy, Prosperity. Those are the two uh, complimentary masterclasses that I would love for anyone to take. Although it is very focused on business, there's a lot of what we're talking about here because business is just another way we live. <laughs> so everything that's taught in there is, is super energetic and how to, how to be that way within your business as well. Megan, thank you for being on the show today and thank you for being present and being here with us, with me and bringing your full self to this moment. And also thank you for sharing with us that love wins. That, mm. that means, and that, you know, living with purpose, that purpose and passion go hand in hand. And I appreciate the shift because that is, that is it. There's nothing to forgive. Love wins. Yeah. Love wins. Thank you so much. We can't wait to have you back on Mishaps, Magic and Mayhem. You do. Thank you, everybody, for joining me today. I want you to tune in again next time to hear my guests and how they are making big waves their own way. This is Mishaps, Magic and Mayhem. I've tried it so you can benefit. 